Hello everyone, I'm Sara and this is Krish. And today um, our presentation topic is cervical lymphadenopathy. That's not what I'm supposed to do. Full screen, full screen. Where's that? Full screen, top right. That's good. Focus thing. Um, so we're going to begin by looking at the lymphatics of the head and neck. Um, we'll go on to look at two of the main causes of um, lymphadenopathy. So these are infections and cancers. Um, and we'll finish off by looking at examinations and treatments of these pathologies. So looking at the lymphatics, what is cervical lymphadenopathy? It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's actually quite simple. It's just an enlargement of the lymph nodes in the cervical region. Um, and the changes that can occur can be um, size, the number of lymph nodes, and also the consistency. So the three main causes of lymphadenopathy include, um, firstly, if you had a multiplication of cells within the lymph node. So these are the cells already there, such as lymphocytes, histiocytes, monocytes. Um, secondly, you could have an infiltration of cells into the lymph node, like malignancy cells um, or neutrophils. And finally, you could have drainage of um, an infection, like an abscess, uh, into local lymph nodes. So here are some key definitions um, and causes of lymphadenopathy. But we're focusing on lymphadenitis and lymphoma today. So lymphadenitis is infection of the lymph nodes, and lymphoma is cancer of the lymphatics. It might be worth looking these up um, at another point. So there are about 60 to 70 lymph nodes in the head and neck region, um, and they're divided into 11 groups. Um, I won't dwell on this too long, as Chris is going to talk about this a little later. So the lymphatic drainage, um, and why is it important? It, it's relevant when we talk about malignancy. Um, and in terms of, of the drainage, uh, the, right, the lymphatic is the right side of the head and neck, drain into the right subclavian vein uh, via the right lymphatic duct. Um, the, left, the lymphatics of the left side of the head and neck drain into the left subclavian vein via the thoracic duct. So lymphadenitis is infection of the lymph nodes. It's also called cervical adenitis. Uh, we've divided these into two types, so viral and bacterial. Uh, upper respiratory tract infections are common to both. So if viral causes can be with the rhinovirus or coronavirus. Others include um, adenovirus or respiratory syncytial virus. Bacterial causes are typically Staphylococcus aureus and group A streptococcus. Um, infectious mononucleosis, you probably know this as a glandular fever or um, kissing disease, and that's because you have um, the transmission of infection via saliva. Um, the causative organism is Epstein-Barr virus, and um, it typically occurs in teenagers, but it's normally self-limiting, and so little treatment is actually required for that. Uh, tuberculous lymphadenitis, this is um, extrapulmonary TB, and you see the classic uh, caseous necrosis in the lymph nodes and granulomatous inflammation. Uh, other diseases include cat scratch disease, seen in kids typically um, caused by Bartonella pensile. And looking at our second cause of lymphadenopathy, lymphoma, which is cancers. So we divide these into primary and secondary. So a lymphoma is a hematological malignancy, and you get the overproliferation of um, lymphocytes. You will typically see a painless lymph node enlargement. Um, and other symptoms include weight loss, like you'd see with other cancers, um, but also uh, itchy skin or night sweats. So they're divided histologically. So if there's the presence of um, reed standberg cells, these are multinucleated um, lymphocytes, um, B lymphocytes, then um, it's called Hodgkin's. And if there's not this cell, then they're classified as non-Hodgkin's. And there's lots of different types of non-Hodgkin's. Um, so you could have a secondary metastasis to, another, to a lymph node from another site such as the head and neck, thyroid, breast, or lung. And bringing back to the lymphatic drainage and why that's relevant, um, if, there, if the left supraclavicular node, also known as um, Verkhoff's node, is enlarged, you should suspect um, gastric cancer or lung cancer. Um, and this is because you get the backflow of lymph into the thoracic duct and then to the left of supraclavicular nodes. I'm now going to pass on to Chris. Okay. So I'm doing investigation and treatments. So the main way you investigate lymph nodes Sorry, I do that again. is via palpation and physical exam. So you need to use your fingers. You've got the four pads of your fingers, which are the most sensitive. You apply firm, but not too firm to squash anything, but firm, but gentle pressure, looking to see if anything is swollen. 
um, and then you're going to do it symmetrically across because if it's an enlargement, it'll be asymmetrical. So comparing two sides will tell you if something's up. You've got four things you're looking for. The size, generally it's larger than two centimeters. It'll be a present for about four weeks already. Consistency, if it's firm, will be malignancy. Tender, it'll be more likely to be inflammation. Uh, mobility, is it fixed to the underlying skin, underlying muscle, sorry, overlying skin? Is it freely movable? If it's movable, it's going to be infection. And if it's fixed, then it's more likely to be metastatic carcinoma. And then also looking at distribution, is it localized or is it regional? So um, we'll do it together if you guys want to follow me. Um, we're going to start off with some, so as you can see, there's loads of causes and drainage areas. I'm just going to pick out a few, um, but you can read this at your leisure if you want. Right, so starting off under the chin, we have the submental lymph nodes. So this is draining the intraoral cavity, the teeth, the enlarged in things like mononucleosis caused by Epstein bars, we said before. Moving along the angle of the jaw, we have the submandibula draining again the tour at the floor of the mouth and the tongue, and enlarging things like pharyngitis um, and um, sinusitis. Moving up to the angle of the mandible, we have the tonsilla or jugular digastric. These are enlarging tonsillitis, mainly of your pharyngeal tonsils. Then anterior to the tragus of your ear, we have the preauricular. So this will be enlarged in cases um, of anything to the iris, the conjunctivitis or ophthalmic herpes zoster. Moving behind the pinna of the ear, we have the postauricular ones. So these, because um, it drains the external auditory meters, so a tice external will be felt here, and also tinea capatis, as I said by the group before. And then at the base of the skull, we have the occipital, so draining all the scalp, so all the scalp conditions you heard of before, or dermal conditions, all felt over there. Moving on to the neck, we have the mastoid muscle, so the anterior border of that is where the anterior cervical chain is, so representative of things like rubella, pharyngitis. Posterior cervical chain behind sternocleidomastoid on the anterior border of trapezius. Um, that's where that sits, and that will be showing up things like TB and lymphoma. So if we did the exam and we saw generalized lymphoma all the way across, we're thinking infectious cause, so cytomegalovirus, adenovirus, or mononucleosis. Once we've done the exam, we found the funny lymph node. We need to find out why is that there. So we do investigations using your bloods. White blood cells will indicate infection, do um, imaging. You can do a fine little aspirate, take it out, biopsy it, find out what's going on that way. As we saw on the screen before, there's loads of associated conditions, HIV, TB, Epstein-Barr, so you can do specific tests if we're thinking something like that's going on. Then to finish off, once you've got your diagnosis, that tells you how to treat it. So like we said before, Epstein-Barr, we just leave it alone, it self-resolves. Um, malignancy, if it's primary, you do surgical excision, and if it's secondary to another malignancy, you treat that one first, because this is a secondary symptom compared to that one. Infectious causes, antibiotics, obviously, if it's a bacterial infection, and abscesses, you just do surgical drainage. Okay, so thank you very much. That's um, all we have to say. I think the rest of our group are on hand if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I actually learned a lot about how to examine myself. <laughs> okay, so can we have uh, our critics? Uh, he, uh, he who? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I really like the result of the sentence that you're pointing out because that's why it's not like it's just people who are sort of boring, but it's always like the massage that you can say you think you're really happy. And like you put a lot of diagrams at first, and then not only the diagrams, you put like tables and graphs and things, the other books. And also the fact that they work on time as well, the same yeah. and then routine as well, programs. Uh, Roshan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was really good as well. Uh, I can only really think of uh, one T. And going on what Amy said, she said that uh, you didn't know your subject, you knew what you were talking about. And there's a few writing, uh, a little bit of writing. But at the start, there's one slide where you only said one part of information, but you had said a load of, sort of symptoms. And I thought maybe it's made note before, so you can see what they're expanding on. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair point. Are there any issues that you want to bring up with the presentation questions or comments? I, I have to say the timekeeping is so bad. 
um, you know, you covered a lot of material in good time. So I'm, I admire you for that. I wish I could do, I could do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can never do it. I just can't do it. I need to do Any Any other questions? Any issues with the presentation questions? Anybody? You got a question? No. Okay, I saw your hand moving. I'm desperate for questions. That's why. All right. Well, um, the presentation was so good. The 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 one thing is used. So well done. Thank you very much indeed.